Family, friends, frenemies, enemies, and foes. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Clyde Rush, and welcome to the Light Body Podcast. What's going on? How you feeling? Listen, I've been thinking about this for a couple of weeks now, and I'm excited to bring it to you. Obviously, you can tell I'm really excited about this, right? But in today's video, we're talking about are you planning to live or are you planning to die? Are you planning to live or are you planning to die? What do your cells have to tell you about this? And I know you like, how am I going to have this conversation with my cells? Well, check this out. Your cells are telling you the story every bit of the day. The question is, is whether or not you're listening to the cells. Okay. So look, here's a deal, right? First of all, I get really excited about this. So if I start running off on tangents and all that other kind of stuff, just listen to it a couple of times and, and listen to it until it makes sense to you. And if it doesn't make sense, then don't worry about it. But if you're the type of person who's thinking about longevity and vitality for life, how do I get this greater expression of living through this one body that I have? Then you've got to treat this body like it's the only body that you've got. You got to take care of this body. Years ago, when I started bodybuilding, right? And I, I, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because it's a very consistent point to the fact about planning to live or planning to die. And I decided then that I was going to live. What happens is, is we get situations, we get circumstances. Sometimes we get, you know, these life challenges that come at you from different directions. For me, it was about relationships, right? Just being straight up, divorce, that whole deal. And what that actually does to a man, first of all, and what it does to a female. But I'm a man, so I'm talking about my situation. You talk about your situation. If you went through it, and if you didn't go through it, peace and blessings to you. But if you have gone through it, think about how you felt. And I'm not trying to take you so far back to the point where you get, get you know, you can't even think anymore. That's not what I'm doing to you. I'm reminding you of a time in your life when it may have been the most traumatic time for you. You had to make a decision at that point. Am I going to live or am I going to die? And sometimes the emotional trauma that we're in, we don't even realize that we're making a decision. Sometimes it feels like the decision is actually made and you have no control of it. Well, I want to prove to you that that's actually wrong. It's what you thought about. Things, thoughts become things. And it's really important to understand that thoughts become things. What you think about, you bring about. So the reason why I'm even bringing this concept about are you planning to live or are you planning to die is because it's based upon a couple of key factors. Now, the body itself is in its design is designed for repair and regeneration. All right. The body itself is designed for repair and generation. I'm going to tell it to you just like this. The human body has intricate systems designed to restore, maintain healthy, highlighting the complexities and efficiencies of biological processes. I got an overview for you. I'm going to try to get some of this stuff in. I'm probably going to have to do a series on this one because this is really important because you got people like Davis Sinclair, David Spree, you got uh, Peter Diamandis, you got all these other people that's out here that's talking about vitality and we're talking about longevity. I said, we, that's right. We're talking about longevity and vitality for life, right? And they've got all these systems, detox for this and situation for that and trying to figure out what's the best way for us to do this. And, you know, doctors saying this, we got plenty of doctors that's going from normal medical practices to functional practicing. And there's a difference. We're going to talk about all this stuff in the next few weeks, because it's just so much stuff, I can't even cram it in here. But I get so excited thinking about it. I got to really stay on task because this is my thing. This is my jam. This is the thing that keeps me up at night and wakes me up in the morning when I think about the restoration and the repair that this body can actually do. As I said a few seconds ago, when I got to that place, there were five key elements that I was thinking about. And you hear me talking about it all the time. It was environment. It was relationships. It was about, you know, work. 
It was about financial investments and investing in myself and health. All right. So the big three is wealth, health and, and relationships. Those are the big three. It's always going to be about those things, no matter what you do, no matter where you go. You're going to be talking about you're going to have to talk about relationships, talk about wealth and you talk about health. So if you have one of those dynamics or one of those areas where there may be some problems, you can function. If you have two of them, you're going to have some challenges. If you have three in those different domains, you got some serious problems. If you're being taxed in four, well, I don't even know what to tell you except to sit back and listen to this and figure this whole thing out and take some time. But if you got five, and what I mean by five is you're challenging your environment, you're challenging your relationships, you're challenged in your wealth, you're challenged in your investments in yourself, and you're challenged in your health, you got some serious work ahead of you. Doesn't mean it can't be taken care of. Just like an elephant can be eaten over the course of a lifetime, not in one setting. So what does that mean? Dissect this thing. Break it down. One thing at a time. Decide first that no matter what the strain, situation, circumstance, adversity, opposition, challenge, confrontation, I'm going to live. I'm going to live. The question is, what's the quality of life that you're going to live for? See, if you want to live to die, you can do that. Keep doing the same thing you were doing. Stay in that five domain area where nothing's working out for you. And I promise you, you'll be living to die because it's going to come to you. Because there's no way the body can sustain that type of stress consistently. Even though that the body is designed and it has systems in place for restore, restoration, to repair, and to rebuild on a subatomic level. That's the design of the body. The first rule of nature is self-preservation. The first rule of nature is self-preservation. How does this body survive? How does this body, body produce and restore and rebuild? Well, the intricate systems in this body is designed based on the immune system that we actually have, cellular repair and regeneration. And we're going to talk about all of those different things. But I want to explain something to you real quick. I don't know if I got to talk about I've brought the concept up, so I'm going to talk about it. Death. Now, I'm also a retired detective from New York City Police Department. I've seen death. As a matter of fact, when you go into the academy, that's one of the first places they actually bring you to is the morgue because they want to shock the sugar honey iced tea out of you if you've never seen somebody dead or passed on or upfront and personal. Literally, you go into the morgue, okay? And I don't know if you've ever been to the morgue or not, but it's it's not like it's a party. But at the same time, what happens is, is it desensitizes you from seeing people from the living state to a dead state. Why? Because when you're out on that street, you don't have time to be emotional and get all caught up and wrapped up in how you're feeling about something. Now, the desensitization process, you understand, is part of the work that you do. And I mean this seriously. It is a part of the work that you do. The problem with that is, is after years and years of becoming desensitized, how does that affect your lifestyle? That's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother light body podcast. But we'll get into that later on. Right now, I'm talking about the death and life aspect. So, of course, when you're on the street and see somebody dead or passed away or murdered or whatever the situation is, the body goes through a decaying process and it starts to break down. Rigor mortis sets in from the furthest point in the body up to the top. I did this homicide course and he talked about all of this stuff, about how to figure out how people die and what happens in the process of death. That's another story too. But the fact of the, mor the, fact of the moral to this story is, is that when rigor mortis starts to set in, it starts in from the furthest point of the body and starts to move up to the heart. All right, but why? Because there's no more blood flow going through the system. Life has already expanded and it actually leaves. I don't know if you've actually, anyway, I don't want to get into all of the morbidity of all of this stuff, but I also did life insurance. So we also talked about ah, the longevity for life. We talked about a mortality table and various things along that line. And when I talk about a mortality table, the question is, is how long are you expected to live? That's what your rates are based on as far as life insurance. And if you don't have life insurance, you need to get some because you need it otherwise you're putting that burden on some other family member if you don't have it in place. You also need a will. That's my financial plan and stuff. We could talk about that another time too, but here's the fact of the matter with this. When you or someone passes on, the life 
cycle that's in that person immediately stops. Decay starts to set in. What do I mean by all of this? The things that you do right now impact your body on a subatomic level. The thoughts that you think, the feelings that you feel, the places that you go, the things that you do, the habits that you have and the behaviors that you actually conduct yourself by impact your body on a subatomic level every single day, all right? So if you wanna start to really live this life like you really wanna live it instead of living it like you wanna die, then there's some things that you're really gonna have to start to change. Now the body can only do what the body can do based on what you do for the body, unless the body goes on autopilot. When the body goes on autopilot, it'll really do some amazing things for you. But the point about this is really trying to get clear on what we want this body to do. And what we want the body to do is sustain itself for longevity and vitality for life, all right? That's what we all want for the most part, okay? In order to do that, there's certain things that this body needs you to do. It needs you to eat properly, not just eat anything, but eat properly. And if the food that we're consuming, the body is built and designed on proteins, all right? Cells create tissues, tissues create organs, organs create the systems in the body, what the body actually needs on a subatomic level. When we talk about protons, we talk about neutrons, we talk about electrons, as far as what this body is built on, right? We talk about carbon, which is what the body is actually built on as well. And for the body to function and operate on a cellular level, there are certain things that we need to put inside this body, minerals, supplements, and if the food that you're eating doesn't have the proper supplementation to it, doesn't have the proper, proper minerals to it, doesn't have the proper vitamins, then you have to find out sources to get that for your body to create the sustainability that you actually need. Yes, I know that this is one of those topics that's just kind of crazy, but if you get it and you catch it and it makes sense to you and you understand it, then you'll be able to have that longevity and vitality for life like it is that you actually want to have, but you just quite have not figured out how to get it. Slow things down. Like I said in the very beginning when I was talking about this whole situation here, I had to say to myself by making a decision, not choices, but making a decision that I was going to that I was going to do things differently, that I was going to create the body that I designed by self, man made. By doing things a lot different than the way that I was doing it. Some of you all already know the story. I happened to take a look at this picture. And when I saw that picture, I didn't even know if it was me. I thought it was somebody completely else. Because I didn't realize the trauma that my body was actually in. I had no idea. The disease that was actually riddled, just waiting to expand and take over my body. But what I decided to do was go internal. And I decided to do the inner work inside of my body. Instead of going from the chronological number of life, I started to go to the biological side of life. I decided I was going to get my body in optimal, optimal. And I say optimal, I mean optimal performance level. And what I decided to do was go into the subatomic level of my body and rebuild, restore, and repair from that point. Rebuild, restore, and repair from that point. So I had to isolate myself for a period of time, still in the silence and solitude. I'm giving you the process for what it is that I did that created this longevity and vitality for life because people are like, you should bottle what it is that you got and you should sell it. I'm giving you the secret sauce right now. I'm not giving you all of it, but I'm giving you some of it. I can't give you all of it because I got to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> but the bottom line is this if you listen i'm giving you a tapestry of how to create this vitality and this longevity for health and wellness in your life based on who it is that you are based on the decisions that you decide to make all right still in the silence and solitude what i did was i had to do an assessment and i had to ask myself what is it that i truly want what is it that i truly desire to have and i mean this seriously i did ask myself this and you should do this you don't have to do anything but i'm just suggesting that you do do it ask yourself what do you truly want well if the environment that you're in is not conducive for health and wellness and growth then you got to create another environment or get into another environment at that particular time there was no way for me to go into another environment so i had to create an inner environment which i already have and what did I do to create that in an environment? Well, I'll give you some of the secrets. Not all of them, but I'm going to give you some of the secrets. 
If you think about a beehive, and I mentioned this before, the work inside the beehive, you have generals and everybody else that's out in the front buzzing around, protecting the inner, the inside based on what's on the outside. So this is why I talk about there's two environments. There's an inner environment, there's an external environment that you actually dwell in, usually your home or your environment that you're in. If the environment that you're in is not conducive for growth and health and wellness, then you're going to be challenged on the inner environment. So what did I have to do? Again, think about the concept of a beehive. The sweetness in the honey is inside the beehive. All right. So you got to be willing to go inside there and do the work to get the stuff out, to get the good stuff in. Good stuff in, good stuff out. All right. So here's the bottom line. What I did again, I went inner. I went on the inside and I went to the subatomic level and asked myself, what is it that I need to do? If you sit and you stay still and you're silent in solitude and you listen, you'll have a conversation with your body. And I mean that seriously on a cellular level. Your body tells you what to do, what to eat, when not to eat. But what we tend to do is we tend to operate on the lower desires of self instead of elevating ourselves to a higher desire of self, higher state of consciousness. So the lower desire itself says, I want this to eat. I want that to eat. This is what it is that I want to eat. And we tend to find it in junk food, especially when you're in pain and discomfort. You want the pain and discomfort to stop. So we binge eat. I did. I just didn't know that I was doing it. And I didn't know that I was doing it for such a long period of time because my discomfort was lasting for long, a longer period of time than I realized up until the moment when I happened to see that picture. And then reality kind of slapped me in the face. I set a goal. I set a goal. It was realistic for me at that particular time. And all I wanted to do was just kind of get my body right. So I entered this competition. That's how this whole bodybuilding thing started. I had to have something to hit. I had to, something, had to have something to measure this thing by. And in order for me to measure what it was, I figured I might as well enter this contest. I entered the contest. But during the process of entering the contest, I also had to, to submit to myself that I wasn't eating right. I wasn't sleeping right. I wasn't getting the right proper nutrition. And prior to this, I didn't have what I call PMA. It's not that I call it, but it's called PMA. And what is PMA? A positive mental attitude. Now I know you're asking yourself, how can I have a positive? <laughs> how can I have a positive mental attitude when things are going so chaotic around me? It just doesn't make sense. Well, if you want to live and you want to make sure that you're here living the, to the optimal design of your body, it will make sense and you will figure it out. As I said to you a couple of minutes ago, thoughts become things. Thoughts become things. What you think about, you bring about. Wait, Tabor, what you think about, you bring about. So I said, all right, listen, let me find out what it is that I got to do as far as getting healthy on the inside out until my outside can reflect my inner journey of discovery that I went on. Dig, discover inner greatness. All right. So I went on an inner journey to discover my inner greatness. And I had to get silent. I had to get still. And I had to go into solitude. In order to do that, I had to create an inner environment that was conducive to my growth. How did I do that? I had to isolate everything off that was going on externally within my body. I started meditating. Now, I know people have this conundrum about meditating and this, that, and the other, but I'm just telling you what it is that I did, and I'm making this the same suggestion to you, is find a way to get still, to get silent, and to get into solitude, and listen to the inner part of your body. How do you do that? Isolate yourself off. I used to wear earphones, earplugs, and I had a song, a frequency, that was playing in my head over and over and over and over and over again. Same song again and again and again. What was I doing? Programming my body neurologically so that every time I heard that song, I knew what that song actually meant. It meant it was go time. Here's the deal. You see these two watches? This is a residual from what's actually going on at my body at that particular time. I have one watch for the biological side of my body, and I have another one for the chronological time of day. Which one is more important to me? 
the time of the day, eh, that's what it is. The biology of my body is more important to me because this is what it is that I'm living by, which is the reason why I wear two devices. Now, it's also kind of, I'll talk more about that later on because it's kind of funny to me. But when you start to go from the biology of the body, there are certain indicators that are really important for you to pay attention to. For me, it was important for me to pay attention to the biology of my body. What's the biology of my body? My heart rate, the blood pressure, um, my breathing, how much oxygenation I actually have within the body, and whether or not my body's functioning, whether or not it's in stress, whether or not it's burning fat, what are those different things that my body's indicating to me that I need to pay attention to? That's this device right here. Now, there's combinations of devices that you can use that's only one thing, but my thing was I want to be able to measure what's actually happening with my body as soon as I want to measure it, which is what this device actually did. This one time of day, yeah, whatever it is, I'll get there at some point or another, but more important to me is this. So again, these are things that I put in place. I had my stillness, I had my silence, I had my solitude, I had my earmuffs on, and then I needed to focus on something. Focus, follow one course until successful. Focus, follow one course until successful. I wasn't focused on my external environment. I was focused on my internal environment because my internal environment was more important to me than what was going on in the external part. Can I avoid the external part? Not at that time, but I had to have a certain mindset, PMA, positive mind, a positive mental attitude is what I had to have, okay? Positive mindset. And things that I'm telling you about right now are the steps that you can actually take in order to get this thing called living for life instead of living for death because we got people walking around here like zombies. Now, then I decided I had to start really, you know, providing the proper nutrients that I needed for my body to, for supplementation because the food that we were eating at that particular time just wasn't conducive for growth and wellness and health. It just wasn't. I was just consuming food because I liked it, not because it was good for me, but because I liked it. There's a difference. There's food that's good for you and there's food that you like. My thing was I had to change from eating the food that was built for shelf life to starting eat the, eating the food that was good for my life. And there's a difference between those two things. When you walk into these different stores, and I'm telling to you just like this, the food that's produced today and the food that was produced then was produced for the shelf life, not your life. My life is more important and my life is based on the food that's grown in the ground Phototropically getting energy from this sun. So if I eat the food <laughs> that's charged up by the sun, naturally, naturally, I'm going to feel better. I'm just telling you what happened to me. Your story can be completely different. It's entirely up to you. This is what it was that I did. So again, I know for the sake of time, I got to start shutting this thing down because we're starting to get into this thing. Anyway, that was my story as far as my process. All right. So again, I decided to do the inner work. I discovered my inner greatness by going within. I decided to focus, pay attention to one specific thing at that particular time. My health and wellness was the priority for me at that particular time. Again, I sat in stillness, silence, and solitude. I decided to do the inner work. I decided, again, this is all about the longevity and vitality for living life and living life in this abundant way and this optimized way of living. All right. I already explained to you that the body itself is designed to restore and to maintain health through this complexity of efficiency and biological processes, all right? Right now, I'm just going to give you a couple of things that the body will actually do. It's about eight or nine of them. I'm just going to run through them real quick. I'm not going to give you the details. I'll talk about that later on. But here are the restorative mechanisms in the body. Cellular repair and regeneration, all right? The immune response for the body. We're also talking about inflammatory response, wound healing. This is what your body actually does, all right? The nervous system repair, bone remodeling, okay? Detoxification process, hormonal regulation, sleep and restoration, autophagy, uh, psychological resilience. Your body, your body, your body, the restorative mechanisms are interconnected in the complex, often involving overlapping systems working in concert to detect damage, defend against threats, repair tissue, and restore functions, maintaining a healthy lifestyle supports these natural processes, the natural processes in the body, enhancing the body's ability to heal and maintain.
vitality. Your body wants to live. It's the choices and the decisions that you're making that confuse the body. And when it confuses the body, the body goes on autopilot. And when this body goes on autopilot, what it will start to do is shut down. Your body will literally start to shut down and create a hostile environment inside your environment if you don't treat it right. It's called dis-ease. Dis-ease. Okay? The body wants to survive itself. All right? But if you're not produced, if you're not creating the right environment for this body to survive and thrive, then the body will go on autopilot and it'll start shutting down. And I mean, seriously, it will start shutting itself down to survive. And this is when different things start to happen, like those crazy diseases that start to come up. I'm not even going to mention them, but there are certain triggers. They call this one a silent killer when we talk about high blood pressure. And high blood pressure was the one. All right. That was the one that would just kind of take people out because they were so stressed. Men in particular, what was actually happening with men, we sit there with this thing called silent rage. And I got something coming up on silent rage and the true masculinity series from for men. Um, that silent rage was the thing was really taking guys out where we were just so angry and so frustrated about stuff. We couldn't talk about our emotions. We didn't even discuss it. We're not even ourselves, but we sat there and we suffered in silence. And that's a whole nother thing. So I decided I wasn't going to do that anymore. I decided I was going to redirect that anger, that frustration that I actually had and turn it into something called sustainability for life, transformation. And I did it. And it took a period of time, just like it could take you and you can do it instantaneously if you choose to. How long will it last? Well, that all depends. But the, the bottom line is, is you got to decide that you're going to start at some point. You got to decide that you're going to start living for life and not living to die. I mean, here's the thing about it. Nobody gets out of life alive. Every single one of us are going that way at some point or another. But how fast you want to get there, we have a decision to make. And that's based on the food. It's based on the environment that we stay in. It's based on the people that we have, relationships, family, friends, foes, enemies, or whatnots. Y'all know who I'm talking about. The ones that think they're they good for you and they act like they're good for you, but they really ain't good for you, but you can't seem to get away from them because you're looking for validation for people who ain't got no business validating you until you validate yourself. That stuff. It's all up to you. So look, for the sake of time, I, I'm going to cut this short. Hopefully you got something out of this, but the bottom line is when I come back on this one, when I come back on this one, I'm coming back and I'm going to break it down for you. And I'm going to tell you what each one of those different things as far as the cellular structure of this body actually is concerned from a subatomic level, because I think it's really important. This one was just an overview to kind of give you an insight about my human experience. Well, yeah, <laughs> I had to laugh with the human experience because people tell me I'm not all the time, but I ain't concerned about that. But the bottom line is this. I just wanted to give you an overview about my experience. When I come back, this is going to be the technical aspect of what it is that we truly need to do as far as maintaining the proper balance and homeostasis for this particular body. You've had your experience. I just want you to know I've had the experiences too. And if you go back and if you listen to this, you'll hear the connections and you hear the tapestry that's been interwoven from my life and integrated from my situations and circumstances, no different than yours. But the thing about it is, is I just decided there was something for me to do. Just like there's going to be something for you to do if you want to do this thing called life and you want to do it more abundantly. The scripture says to renew your mind daily. Old things have passed away. So what does it look like for me to keep putting on yesterday when it's a brand new day? I don't have to do that. That's a decision that I've decided to make. And I'm not making those type of decisions any longer. If yesterday wasn't conducive for me, then I didn't get the most out of it until I squeezed every single drop out of yesterday. Why would I go and put yesterday on again today, no matter how fantastic the day was? Today can be an even better day than yesterday was. Every Tuesday is Clyde versus Tuesday for me. I don't know what day you decide to pick, but I suggest you pick one for yourself. And I know you love on yourself. Yeah, yeah, I love on me and I love on me so much. And I do it every single day that I don't need one specific day. Good for you. Good for you. For me, I decided on just like there's a holiday, Clyde versus Tuesday, four times out of the month, 52 weeks in a year, I'm going to celebrate me. 
And I can do that with you. I can do it without you. But I know for me, I'm getting down on Clyde vs. Tuesday because that's what I do. However, <laughs> the fact of the matter is, is this. What you think about, you bring about. If you want to live life, you got to plan to live it. If you don't plan to live it, the automatic function comes in. Death. And it eats at you slowly. It erodes the body. Literally breaks this body down for survival. Because that's what the body's doing. It's breaking itself down for survival. Slowly but surely. So if you really want to start to live the right way, you got to feed the body the proper proteins, carbohydrates, nutri nutrients, macronutrients. That this body actually needs for sustainability and vitality and health and wellness for life. Okay. So look, this is part one. I, that's my story. This is part one, my story. Part two, when I come back, I'm going to give you the structure from a subatomic level on what the body actually does as far as the intricate systems, how they function, what they work, what are some of the things to really pay attention to. That one, that's going to be fire, okay? Because it's just going to be facts, principles. It's not my situation that I happen to work for me. I'm talking about what I implemented within my body. That's a basic principle that if you implement in your body, you will get the same return. Remember, a basic principle is going to operate and govern itself the same way, no matter who it is that you are. And that's what it is that we want. If something works for me and I tell you that it works for me and it's a basic principle and it's going to work for you, as long as you operate and govern it the same way. All right. That's really what it comes down to. We got to talk about habits and we got to talk about our behavior because those are two different things. Habit, behavior. So we're going to talk about the principles, cellular therapy, cellular respiration, because that's my thing. We're going to talk about habits and we're also going to talk about behavior. In the conundrum between the three of them. All right. So listen, with that being said, I hope I wasn't on here too long, but I just wanted to give you a little history about my story. If it sounded like it was all over the place, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it truly was all over the place. That's the whole point. There's no straight line. It's not about the straight line. It's about the chaotic. It's about the zigzag. It's about the up and down, the back, two to the front, one to the left, like the cha-cha slide, two to the back, one to the front, all of that other kind of stuff. That's how life is. It's up, it's down, it's stop, it's to the left, it's to the right. It's not a straight line. That was the whole point behind this whole story right here. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to give you all the facts because I think you really need the facts to understand this whole thing. But at the same time, that was my life. What's your life? <clears throat> and what do you want your life to look like? Really, seriously, like what do you want your life to look like? And start living from that perspective. If you want to have more vitality, you want to have more wellness, you want to have more health, you want to have more longevity, you got to decide that that's what you want. All right. So listen, with that being said, this brother's taking two steps to the rear and he's getting up out of here. Peace, blessings, prosperity, and abundance. Namaste. You enjoy the rest of your day. Clivers Tuesday, every Tuesday, pick your day and make it a fun day, a loving day where you love on yourself like nobody else can. You ain't got to tell everybody where you're going. I do because I want you to know what's going on. Out here. I'll tell you exactly where I'm at. But the fact of the matter is, is pick your day and have fun on that particular day. All right. At least one day out the week. I will come back and I'll definitely will give you this human intricate systems designed to restore and to rebuild this body. It's a systematic way of doing it. And I want you to have it. Like I said, we got some key champions out here. My job that I really want to do is just impact health and wellness across this country, across this world in a way that it's never been before. All right. I hear a lot of my friends going through a whole lot of stuff that that I just wish they didn't have to. All right. And these are decisions and choices that they've made. And, you know, life is in the eye of the beholder. Okay. So with that said, peace. I'm out. One love to y'all. Oh,